Let's continue learning about channels in the mixer section of Total Mix Effects by learning about settings. Now we can access settings in any channel by clicking this little wrench icon. This will expand the channel to show settings, and that's the same for hardware inputs, software playback, and hardware outputs. If you want to hide settings, just click the wrench again. Now as you look at settings for various channel types, you'll notice that some of the controls are different, but there are some common controls. At the very top of every channel, we have the stereo link button. When it's off or gray, the two adjacent channels are not linked. So you can see I have mic one and two as individual mono channels. But when the stereo button is on or orange, the stereo channel is linked. So as you can see here, analog seven and eight are linked as a stereo pair. The same applies to software playback and hardware outputs. Now I could link any pair of adjacent mono channels by clicking stereo. Now you can see mic input one, two are linked as a stereo pair. To unlink them, I'll just open settings again and click stereo so that it's off. By default, some hardware inputs like mic inputs and line instrument inputs are going to be set as mono and others like our line inputs and our digital inputs are set as stereo. Software playback channels and hardware output channels also default to being linked to stereo. Again, you can unlink them as you like. Now for any input source in Total Mix, hardware inputs or software playback, you have some additional controls if the channel is stereo. First you have width, and this affects the stereo width or spread of that stereo channel. The default is all the way to the right at one. That means the left channel is panned hard left and the right channel is panned hard right. If we click and drag this knob downward, we're changing the stereo width. Right at the center, the stereo width is now essentially mono. Left and right signals coming in are distributed evenly to the left and right destination. If we click and drag all the way to the left, our stereo field is now inverted. The left side is being sent to the right, and the right side is being sent to the left. In addition to width, stereo hardware input and software playback channels have an additional control for stereo, and that's this button, MSPROC, and that stands for mid-side processing. Mid-side, or MS, is not only a miking technique, but it's also a method used when mastering. It allows a mastering engineer to treat the middle or center portion of the mix separately from the sides or the elements that are panned hard left and right. When MS processing is engaged, an incoming stereo signal is split, so the mid is panned to the left, and the sides are panned to the right. This allows you to hear the difference between what's in the middle and in your stereo field. Now another common control for all channels is the phase button. For mono channels, it'll look like this. It'll be one button and it'll say phase. For any stereo channels, it'll look like this, one for left and one for right. When we engage phase on any channel, it's inverting the phase or polarity of that signal. This is a useful way to adjust signals if they are out of phase. If I'm bringing in a stereo signal and something doesn't sound right, maybe a little pinched, or there's a lot of cancellation, I could try reversing the phase on the left side or the right side and see if things are better. I use phase a lot on hardware inputs when recording, especially when recording the same thing in different ways. If, for example, I'm recording a bass guitar, I might bring a direct input as well as mic the bass amp cabinet. And sometimes the combination of those two can give me phase problems. By simply inverting the phase on one or the other, I might be able to eliminate some cancellation, which could make that bass guitar sound a little pinched. Now let's take a look at some of the differences in settings for hardware inputs. And you'll notice that for hardware input channels, there are some different controls. Let's take a look at our mic inputs first. Just below our stereo link button, we have this 48V button for mic inputs. 48V is short for 48 volt DC power, sometimes known as phantom power. There are some microphones, particularly condenser microphones, that require power. When I engage 48V for a mic input, it's sending power across the mic cable to power up a condenser mic. Now, not all microphones use phantom power, and some microphones could be damaged if phantom power is applied. If you're not sure whether your microphone requires phantom power, check the documentation for your microphone before you engage this. Now instead of 48 volt phantom power, our line inputs have a different control in the same position. If we jump over here to analog input seven and eight, we see this button just below stereo, and at the moment it says plus four dBU. This allows us to change the reference level for this input. When we click this button, we get a pull down menu. We have plus four dBU, minus 10 dBV, and low gain. 
Most audio devices with a balanced line level output operate at plus 4 dBU, but not all of them do. Some operate at a lower or quieter reference level, which would be minus 10. On the other hand, some devices have line level outputs that are pretty hot, and low gain allows us to deal with that. Low gain operates like plus 4 dBU minus 6 dB, so it's got a little bit of attenuation to adjust for a really hot incoming signal. Now you'll notice that below this reference level button it says level 5 through 8. That means that on the Fireface UCX, when I adjust the reference level for input analog 7 and 8, it's also going to be changed for input analog 5, 6. They'll all change reference levels together, so be aware of that. Now if we look at analog input 3, you'll see that reference level button is a little bit different. And that's because analog inputs 3 and 4 on my Fireface UCX could operate as a line input or an instrument input. The left side of this button is our reference level, plus 4, minus 10, or low gain. On the right side we have this INST button, which is short for instrument. When I engage this button by clicking on it, this hardware input is now expecting a high impedance instrument input. For example, an electric guitar. Now because analog inputs 3 and 4 on my Fireface UCX could receive an instrument input, they also have a gain knob, which you can adjust just like the mic input gain. Now we also have a reference level setting for our analog hardware outputs, and as indicated where it says level 1 through 6, changing the reference level for one of our analog hardware outputs will change it for all 6. When I click on the button we can see our choices. We have minus 10 dBV, plus 4, and high gain. High gain is very much like plus 4 dBU, adding 6 dB on top of what you'd expect from plus 4 dBU. Now right in the middle of settings for hardware input and software playback channels, we see effect send. This rotary dial is really the same as the slider, which we learned about in the previous video. They're not only the same, but they're linked together. So if I move this rotary dial, the slider moves, and if I move the slider, the rotary dial moves. The rotary dial is a little bigger, and it has this level readout, so it's a little easier to control. The slider is there in case you're not viewing settings. Now as we learned in the previous video, bringing up effect send on a channel will send some or a lot of that audio over to our onboard effects processor. So you can see that now that I've brought up effects send on this analog input 3, I'm getting some input signal on my effects processor. And using effects send, I could send signal from some or all of my hardware inputs and software playback channels. Now you'll notice that in hardware outputs, I don't have effects send. Instead, I have effects return. This gives me control of how much reverb or echo I'm sending to the hardware outputs. As I bring up effects return, I'm blending reverb and or echo in with the rest of my mix. If I bring effect return all the way down, this hardware output will have none of the reverb or echo. So I can control if and how much effect I'm sending to each hardware output. Our hardware output settings section has a few additional controls across the bottom. Talkback allows us to send signal from a talkback microphone to one or more hardware output. So if I engage talkback on this channel, and I engage talkback in my control room section, when I speak into my talkback mic, it'll be sent to hardware output analog 1, 2. And I could enable talkback for several hardware outputs. We'll learn how to set up a talkback mic when we learn about the control room section later. Now below talkback we have no trim. As we learned in the previous video, each input source, hardware inputs, or software playback could have different fader levels going to different routing targets or destinations. And if we want to adjust levels for all destinations on the same channel, we can enable trim gain. Now we see fader levels for each routing target this input is going to. We can see down on hardware outputs that this analog 3 input is going to both analog 1, 2, and analog 3, 4. With trim gain on, I could adjust a level going to both of those destinations. However, there may be cases where you want the levels going to a particular hardware output to be fixed and not changed by trim gain. If I engage no trim and make an adjustment to any channel where trim gain is on, it'll no longer be affected, and you can see that this is not moving. So that's handy if you're using trim gain a lot, but you want one hardware output to remain fixed. Finally, at the bottom of hardware outputs, we have loopback. When loopback is engaged, the same mix that's going to this hardware output is also being sent to the driver, which means you could record this mix into your recording software. Now to see how this works, I've brought up Pro Tools. Now I've just got a single stereo track. Its input is in 1, 2, which are the first two inputs on my RME Fireface, mic input 1, 2. I still have my microphone plugged into mic input 1, so I'll bring up the gain on this mic input and I'll record enable the track in Pro Tools. As I speak into the microphone, we can see we're getting level on one channel, the left side. 
But if I wanted to record my mix of inputs in total mix, I could do that by engaging loopback. Now with loopback engaged, the first two inputs I can select in Pro Tools are the same signal as what's going to analog out 1, 2. With loopback engaged, my hardware inputs are disabled in Pro Tools. Instead, Pro Tools is waiting for signal to come from one of these mixes. So I could record a mix of hardware inputs and even software playback and send it into my recording software. And you'll notice that at the moment, because I'm sending signal into Pro Tools and back out, I'm showing something on software playback channels one and two. But I also have this channel turned all the way down. If this fader was up, I'd be feeding the same signal back into Pro Tools and be creating a weird loop. So be sure that your software playback channel assigned to your loopback channel is not turned up. In our next video, we'll learn about onboard channel EQ and dynamics. Thanks for watching.